So we have another caller. You are on the Black West Sister Presents the People Before Politics radio show. Please state your name and purpose for calling. Hello. AJ, Charlie Stern, how you doing? Charlie Stern, how you doing? I'm all right. Enjoying the show as usual. People Before Politics is rocking as usual. I'm enjoying it very much. I'm wondering, where, when when do I get to see Damon? I haven't seen him in a couple of weeks. Then he was on, then he was off. What's well, going well, on? Well, Damon's on a little hiatus. Damon is working on a few things, and you're about to know about all of that real mm -hmm. soon. Um, okay. Until then, I'm holding it down. He came the two weeks while I was in Atlanta because I wasn't going to be here. So, you know what I'm saying? He came, you know, filled that in. And now, and now he's back to holding it down. He's working through some stuff right now, and it's, you're about to see in a minute. You're about to hear about all of that. So um, he has it. He, trust me, he is, is very active. Um, he's just not right now. I'm the face right now. I'm the <laughs> face you see. But that does not mean that Damon is not been, Damon's busier than he was when he was yeah. on the show right now. So that's all I can say right now on the air. Fair enough. Purpose of my call, I would like to get your very informed opinion about a local slash regional slash national topic that is of great import, which is this Amazon Long Island City deal. I'm curious to hear the people before politics opinion on that. What's your outlook on it? Well, first, thank you for saying you want to hear my informed opinion. <laughs> I appreciate you saying those nice words. Um, secondly, you know what? Um, I've been I haven't really, you know, was trying to get this issue and I really wanted to um concentrate on this midterm election issue that we put out um, and I was putting a lot of myself into that and then uh, some well ne well needed rest so I have not I have not really looked at the pros and the cons um, I listened to what's being said I watched the de Blagio interview where he said in the long run the money that's gonna come in and the tax revenue and all that that, that sounds good um, what's gonna concern me and what I'm looking into I know a lot of these situations when a major corporation comes through, especially when they know you desperately want them and you got a governor saying, yo, I'll do anything they want to get them here. I'll change my first name to Amazon Cuomo if they come. Right. That means basically, you know what I'm saying, they got leverage over you and you end up getting all kinds of tax breaks and all kinds of stuff. So I'm waiting to, I'm willing, I'm waiting to see what breaks they got I mean, you have to get incentives. I understand that. I mean, that's you know, you go to the most, you go to the place where it's business. You go to the place where it's most affordable and where you could do the most, right. and and all that. I understand that. But what effect will that have? Um, what what they always promise? All these things promise lots of jobs. There's tens of thousands of jobs promised. Um, let's see if that really happens and what kind of jobs. You know, Walmart hires tens of thousands of people, too, and most of the people who work there is on some kind of um, public assistance, some mm -hmm. kind of food stamps or something, but they give thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of jobs. Yeah. So let's not get caught up on the number. What kind yeah. of jobs are they giving? What kind of salaries are they paying? Mm -hmm. um, what's being also, uh, um, <coughs> what concerns me and what I like to see, a lot of times in these developments and these put the, is where they're going, who's being pushed out? Right. Um, you know, I haven't heard all of that. I'm not I haven't looked at I haven't really looked at the the, the landscape of where they're going. Is what's there well, what's what's there now that's going to be pushed out? Cuz a lot of times sometimes small if it's even if it's not residents and it, it's small businesses. Yep. <coughs> well, uh, so so a couple a couple of comments. One, what's going to get pushed out? Uh, you know, and I I I'm in Long Island City from time to time for uh, business meetings and so forth. In that particular block of of buildings that they're thinking of taking over there's like a plastics manufacturing company there uh there are some smaller city agencies that will get this place i think the new york city economic development council has an office there um but there's no one big massive tenant and then there's some empty space as well and clearly part of the reason they're interested in that parcel is because it's right along the river so it's possible to get a ferry in there or you know boats and that, that kind of thing yeah i did hear talk about a ferry or something um, yeah, yeah, but 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 you know I can answer this question. This is from my own direct personal experience. You know, in 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 what I do for a living, AJ, I work for a very large technology company, and and I don't work for Amazon, but I I work for the kind of company um, that is in that same sort of space, and I can tell you what kind of jobs those are going to be. They are going to be high-paying, um, sort of. These are going to be knowledge workers. 
These are going to be highly paid knowledge workers, the kind of people that work for Microsoft, the kind of people that work for Salesforce.com, the kind of people that work for big tech. Um, they're, they're not going to be you know, middle-class jobs for people from Regal Park, Queens. These are going to be, these are going to be people with degrees and experience, making high salaries, looking for expensive luxury housing. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, and I understand on some level that's what some people are objecting to. Um, but I think it's an amazing and unusual political moment because here you have Governor Andrew Cuomo and Mayor Dil Bill de Blasio who are supposedly you know, at odds on every issue, and they're sitting at the same table saying, this is a great thing. They're in lockstep. Unlike I'm always, I'm always, any other issue I've ever seen, I'm always I, and, and just just being the person that I am, I am always a little concerned when adversaries are in lockstep with anything. I just it just makes me want to look at it a little harder. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying when adversaries that can't agree on anything, when they're on lockstep about something, it just makes me want to look at it a little harder. And that's just that's just who I am. You know what I'm saying? And I, we, that's right. what people come to us to ask those kind of questions. So, um, yep. but 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 I um, I believe also there's going to be pros and cons. Like, everybody's right. not going to be happy, period, right. no matter how it goes down. But if it goes, and I'm, I'm projecting because I have not looked into it, it should help the economy, especially in the immediate area, because all those people are going to have to eat somewhere, um, and they move in, they're going to they're gonna have to do, you know, they have to be services. that they, People need services everywhere they go. So people, right. those kind of businesses... Um, are they going to bring in businesses for those things? Are they going to support the local businesses that make up that com surrounding community? Those are the things that you know, um, you know, you, you, you got to watch. But um, I, I think it's a good deal. I just want to see what happens because. Yeah. But but what happens is somebody and somebody just said something about Tarrytown. I know my dad worked for General Motors, and that whole community was built around it. And when that plant closed, it. It hurt that whole surrounding community that that, that 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 lived off of that. Like the two especially for people of color, mm -hmm. um, middle class and, and, and below, the two biggest employers was General Motors and Valhalla. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So General Motors right. General Motors helped a lot of people step up and be called middle class that would not have normally have been because of General Motors. So um, hopefully Amazon will be that for the community. I think overall, once we get past, I know there were concerns of the number seven train that is highly congested now. Um, right. Um, what, what, well, that's going to be more traffic. Um, de Blasio said they're going to be running trains more frequently, and they're going to do some. Now, uh, the things I always ask, like Amazon, now the infrastructure and the subway and all that stuff has been crumbling and it needs to be repaired. And the thing I always say is when these corporations like that come through, certain things, and I'll give you a, a way smaller example. When Dave and Buster came to um, Pella Manor, and I saw all the paperwork and I did a, several stories on it, Pella Manor, I don't know, in their studies or whatever, determined that their being there was going to cause extra amount more for the community and police and all these other things with traffic flow and all this other stuff. And they made Dave and Buster pay $1.5 million to cover that cost that it would cost the community. Right. Using that example, since they will benefit from all of these things and because they're the big billion-dollar corporation, there should be some kind of incentives that, you know, I, think, I believe in incentives, but incentives like this, like we need this subway that y'all going to benefit, that y'all going to, uh, that it's going to cause it to be more overcrowded. We need it needs X amount of work, and then the partnering with the city to do. I'm not saying it's their job to totally fix it all by themselves, but getting them to contribute to it. I think that, and then and then on the other end, giving them a tax extra tax incentive for it. Now I think that's a good thing, um, balancing out because we're going to need that. De Blasio says be, the, ex, the increased tax revenue will be able to cover all of that, but there's no. I know he said because it was asked directly of him. And he kind of skated around the question. There is no kind of direct thing to have them contribute to that, you know. And I think I think we benefit as communities when we get that, you know. I think that's one of the problems with Mount Vernon. Everybody develops in Mount Vernon. 
I, I think in Yonkers too, in some other communities, and we don't get them to pay for some of the stuff that needs to get paid for. That's mm-hmm. that's that's just another concern of mine, and you know. So I to, just to to kind of recap a couple of things that you said. You know what I Absolutely. mean? It really comes down to. I think it comes down to execution. It's it's how they do it, right? right. So we can broadly agree that it's a good thing to have twenty five thousand jobs that we didn't have before. Absolutely. Even if you know, even if they're all upper middle class jobs, and you got to have a degree, and it's not going to really do a whole lot for the, well, can the I stop, lower can middle I stop class. You? Can I stop you real quick? Yep. I will yep. say one thing that people don't look at. So if you do have a job, if you have 25,000 jobs that are all degrees and all of those things, wait, 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 there is a plus for that. Because a lot of those people with those degrees got jobs that are below that, that they're taking from people who can't get those jobs because the people with the degrees got them jobs. So it's going to free up a lot of those jobs for people to, to, to get jobs too. So mm-hmm. it, it does have a plus somewhat in it. Like it, even though like those people, a lot of those people locally are working somewhere. And if you take them from that, those jobs are available. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I just wanted to say. Yeah. So, so yeah. I, I agree. And it, look, broadly, if you're a mayor or you're a governor, how do you look at 25? How do you look at any big company that can be a jobs engine and say, no, we don't want you here. You, you have right. to do something. Right, 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 right. But, but the execution of it is going to be so critical because right. There's a bunch of politicians, and Gillibrand is among them, and this uh, new Congress member, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, is one of them. And by the way, your new state senator, Alessandra Biagi, is one of them. She re- she actually referred to, in one of her Twitter messages, she referred to... Uh, um, she referred to the package of benefits that the state is rolling out as a bribe, which I think may be a little bit overreaching. But nevertheless, there are a bunch of electeds who don't like this thing. And 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 maybe collectively what they can do is cause the state and the city to execute on this in a way that, you know, there's a few things that need to happen. Like, I think it's a legitimate concern that the number seven train is already overcrowded and needs it needs tremendous amount of investment. I think it's a legitimate concern, um, you know, what's going to happen um, to the neighboring small businesses in Long Island City. That's, that's, that's those legitimate concerns. It's all, it all comes down to execution, and, and there's a lot of room um, when you have a multi-billion dollar company, well, a $200 billion dollar company coming through town with 25,000 jobs. There's a lot you can do. There, there, is, um, there, there is, and, and the Blasio right. tried to explain it. I just want to interrupt you real quick, because since you wanted the people before politics, um, 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 input on it. Bob, Dr. Bob wasn't here, but he's listening, and he listed four things that he wanted me to read. One, at a time when people are fed up with business as usual, one of the difficulties in assessing the deal is the lack of transparency. Two, it is unseemly for, it's, it is unseem. well, okay, somebody, else. it is unseeming, it's seemly for the world's richest corporation to get multi-million dollar tax breaks, the benefits of which are likely to flow in the pockets of companies, top paid executives, not the factory shop floor workers. Mm -hmm. Number three, a considerable amount of the journalist reports and scholarly studies raise serious questions about the efficiency of tax breaks to deliver on the promise of jobs. And number four, lastly, um, instead of these one-sided tax deals written into the deal should be some sort of performance criteria that corporations should fulfill before getting the tax breaks. I just want to speak on number four, and I want to put it in terms, and it was one of the greatest things I've seen in a sports contract. Um, when the Jordan Bulls, when they got Rodman, Rodman got a bare necessity contract, but because he was always getting ejected out of games, because he was always getting all these mm-hmm. flagrant fouls. His contract was incentive-driven. He got a million dollars or some extra million dollars if he, if he became the, the top three in rebounds. He got an extra million dollars if he could make it through the playoffs, get him to the playoffs without getting too many flagrant fouls. He got an extra million dollars. Like, like it made him perform. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I think if you take that, I think that's a little bit of what Bob is saying. If you... If you give more of a performance, oh, and again, like I said, well. using using the example I said with the, the 7 train and working on some of the infrastructure and them investing into the community that they're going to move into, um, I, I think, but, you know, I understand the politics of it, 
but there has to be a balance. That's and that's you know, um, putting summing it all up. Yep, yep. And I think it's an appropriate use of government to kind of stand in the middle and say, hey, you want to you want you know to to create a multi-acre development for this type of business uh, application, you, you know you got to help us with the infrastructure because we're not prepared. You know, the highway's crumbling, the subway's not prepared for it, um, and, you know, the street lights and everything else that needs to go into it, uh, you got to you got to pony up. Uh, now, on the other hand, pilots do work. I mean, we there's I mean, Mount Vernon is, is famous for the pilots that were handed out for Target and all that stuff, and it really has been a successful development there on, on South I, I, Sanford Boulevard. And, but you know what? And, and I've, I've sat in many... Um Forums, let's just say, um, when Ernie was 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 um, mayor, and um, I listened to the residents, I listened to the politicians. I mean, depending on who you listen to, whether it's working, because from what I've been told, and again, I came back in 2014. I always preface that, so I was in Georgia for 10 years or so. Um, I wasn't here when the deals were made. Supposedly, all the jobs that were promised didn't manifest. You know, there goes a big promise of jobs that didn't manifest all of those jobs. Yep. And then, you know, what's the tricky part of it is the the construction of the property. So, so there's a certain amount of jobs that are just in the construction part and the building of it. And once it's built, right. those jobs don't exist no more. So, but they're counted in the number of jobs that they made available. You know, so it's it's some stuff like that as well. So, and, and I, 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 pallets can be good. And pilots can be bad. And I think our elected officials, the people that we get, and we elect these people to have the knowledge and gather the information to do what's best for the community. And some communities, a pilot may be more beneficial than mm -hmm. other communities. Some communities, they might not come in without a pilot. You know, some communities you might have to give a little more, but you, you need to get some. I mean, I understand politicians have to weigh this. They have all these meetings that we don't sit in and we don't get to right. hear all of the information. It does never trickle down to the people. Uh, I don't care how many forums they have and how many town halls they have. The people never get the information. Right. I live on the south side and on 7th mm -hmm. Avenue in the middle of the hood, and I'm telling you when I walk down the street, then people never know what the hell that all these people are talking about because they never hear it. They never hear it. They act like I'm saying it, but I'm telling them I invented the wheel or something because they're hearing it for the first yep. time. You know what I'm yep. saying? Yeah, so and, it's, and, and you know what? There's just so much nuance to this whole thing. It's really a lot of it is going to come down to how the city and the state market this to people and how Amazon markets it to people so that they don't come across like this big greedy corporation sucking the life out of the city in exchange for a prime piece of real estate. There's so much. It's, it's what you mentioned. It's pilots, but it's also – Apparently, they're going to have this alternative method of getting uh, the land use regulations addressed, and there's Excelsior tax credits involved, and there's uh, economic development subsidies, and, you know, it's just a whole gigantic wedding cake of concessions that they're getting out of the state and the city, and it's got to be teed up just right so people can deal with it and the city gets something out of it and, you know, so that it's not a, you know, a complete catastrophe. So. I understand why there's a certain degree of organized opposition, but on the other hand, you can't topple it and chase them away. Because think about how many businesses have left New York and our area and Westchester Absolutely. over the last 15, 20 years. Like, like a lot of jobs have disappeared to other states and cities. General and that's Motors, not healthy either. General Motors went to you know, Georgia. So. They, they closed Tarrytown and opened two plants, and they, everybody went to two plants in Georgia, Doraville and, and Albany, Georgia. Like that's when my dad went down in 96, 95, 96 in that, in that big – um, effort. They all moved them there, um, but that hurt Westchester and hurt that whole Tarrytown area. And I don't know if that that area actually recovered fully from 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 that that um, from them leaving. And that's just one example. Um, but I I, I don't want to spend the whole show on that. But um, we could definitely revisit this. I still want to I want to end it how I started. I'm going to be watching. These are some of the concerns of the things that I will be looking for. I'm going to watch. You know, on all sides how this plays out. Then you know. You have to, you have to, the deal's coming, the deal has been made, let's see how good the deal was, let's see how good it was negotiated, let's see, um, give them a chance to move in and see if they, if they they keep up the word on the things that Amazon said that they were going to do, and if our politicians that we have in there are the, are the right people that are going to hold their feet to the fire and make sure they do all the things. These are all the things that I'm going to, Black Westchester and people before politics is going to be watching, 
And then I can tell you in the end whether it was a good deal or not. I mean, I really can't tell you now. I think it's it, on paper, it's a really good thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing for New York, and there are a lot of pluses, although with everything, I mean, the, the, the Nets moving to Brooklyn, a lot of people had to be moved. You know what I'm saying? But that state, but that, but right. the stadium has done a great for the and economy. It has done a lot for the economy, and it's a beautiful stadium, and all the business, everything around it is thriving. Um, you know, um, same thing. And when I talk about was in Georgia with the, the Braves moving to Cobb County, a lot of things had to be moved out of there. It disrupted a lot of stuff. It's still on the table whether that was a good that was a good move for Cobb County um, because a lot of the downtown Atlanta people are not traveling up to Cobb County. So, you know, it's, it's after the fact. You have to see. Um, but sure, hopefully, sure. hopefully on paper, when they come, because the other corporations are going to be watching. This, see, that's the, that's the important thing. Someone has to be first. The big play. So when other people see, oh, well, Amazon's there, you know what? I'm coming too. You know what I'm saying? And, and then and other people are going to watch. I'm coming too. So you need it. You need one. I mean, that's my Vernon needs really is one good business, like you know, national business chain something. I believe Mount uh, Vernon responded to the same RFP. Huh? Say that again. I believe Mount Vernon did respond to the Amazon uh, RFP. You, I agree with you. They need. They, they need something see, like that. See, Mount Vernon and Mount Vernon is a prime piece. The mayor says this, but this wasn't just you know. This is not something he created. This is this is something that always. Mount Vernon is the most great. Mount Vernon. And let me say this out loud for all the people that say. And then I'll read Jeff got Jeff, Jeff got a comment. Uh, all of um, um, for all the people that say I have nothing good to say about Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon is the most prime real estate in Westchester County, and I, the reason I say that is nowhere else we have three Metro North stops, and if you live on the borderline of the Bronx, you could actually go to Wakefield. So that's three and almost four stops, right? Wakefield is on the other side. It's not really Mount Vernon, but it's two or three blocks from Mount Vernon. We have two subway lines on um, the, the end of the five and the end of the two on our border line, on our borders. We have access to, I believe, five highways. So And two we, rivers. And two rivers. So, like, those things for national corporations that do a lot of traveling and, you know, the trucks come in and out, that's ideal for them. And that's why gentrification is coming because it, they're starting to realize that the people that live upstate – you know, you people got to go all the way to Middletown or something, or all the way up there to get a piece of property. You know what I'm saying? The people that there's a lot of people well to do up there that work on Wall Street or somewhere, and yo, you're fi- you're twenty something minutes away from New York City. Like, I mean, you can get to you can get to Grand Central Station. Yep. What is it, twenty two minutes or something like that? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't know the exact minute, but yeah. you're, you're the closest yeah. you can to being in the city without being in the city. Right. Yeah. So for those reasons, and that's why I fight so hard for Mount Vernon, get it right, and for the elected officials to be on the same page and move forward for the, because this is such a, and, and, and it's such a prime real estate. Um, if we don't get it together, someone's going to come up in here, get all of us out of here, and they're going to get it together without us. Because mm-hmm. that's what happened in Harlem mm-hmm. and Dumbo in Brooklyn and all those places in Brooklyn and parts of Chicago, everywhere. It, it's not, you know, Brooklyn yeah, Georgia. so so them type of places, and, and that's what's going to happen in Long Island City. Like that whole area around Long Island City, there's going to be development all within 5, 10, 15, 20 miles outside within Queens and everything that parts of Long Island and Nassau County and other places where this very thing is going to be a whole other thing that's going to bring revenue and all that stuff and, and make it a, a real reasonable for people living in Nassau County to be able to get to the city without having to go through the bridge and all that other stuff. It's going to, be a, it, it's going to bring all of those things, but... We got to get it together anyway about Mount Vernon. Um, Jeff Monroe from Mount Vernon said, no, and he was responding to Dr. Bob's comment, knowing the historical corruption of this company and the New York State and city political parties, we all know the above won't happen. I know Charles Stearns will be more historically critical. And he posted a link to a story in the New Republic that anybody can uh, click on um, about attempted bribes, Amazon's illegal something. Um, and I, I see Charles, you've already responded and said you will check the article. So everybody can check yeah. the article for themselves. Um, thank you, Jeff Monroe, as always, for, you know, we, we want all the different opinions. Um, and thank you, Charles, 
for calling in and bringing that question up because that was definitely something that I wasn't even thinking about talking about. And I didn't know, hey, I, didn't know I knew as much thank about you. it as I did once I started talking. But go ahead. Well, thank you, AJ, and uh, good luck to have a good show tonight on People v. Politics, and uh, thanks for talking about this for a few minutes. Uh, no doubt, no doubt.